Welcome back to another Animal Adventures with Jordan, and today we are featuring one of our antelope species here at the park, which is the Attix antelope. Now, the Attix antelope is native to the Sahara deserts of Africa, and it's a very well adapted animal with a significant need for conservation in its wild habitat. So, first things first, we're going to talk about some anatomy of our animal. Like I said, living in the Sahara Desert, it's hot, it's dry, resources are limited, but these guys have adapted and evolved to really sustain and, and do quite well there when not interrupted by poaching and hunting. So first things first is that white coat you see on our guys is actually seasonal. That white coat changes color depending on the time of the year. In the hotter months, it is white to help uh, uh, detract, uh, deflect some of the heat from that sun and to uh, thermoregulate the body. But in the winter months, when it's colder, what happens is these guys will actually develop a more darker coat, a gray coat. And you can see it's starting to come in on our animals here as we are in the fall season at Animal Adventure in upstate New York. Now that coat, obviously when it turns a little bit darker in color, will attract that sunlight, which again helps warm that body up. Now the name Attix actually comes from an Arabic word, which means spiraled or crooked horn. And if you notice our Attix, their horns are significantly spiraled, and those horns can reach a length of anywhere from two to like three feet long. And what do they use them for? Kind of what you're seeing in the background here is kind of jousting and playing with one another. Now mind you, this is a male and female pair, and they're simply fighting for my attention at the moment and for the few food treats I just dropped in there. But generally this is engaged between the males of the herds to fight for their breeding rights. Now while we're talking about herds, we'll simply address kind of that structure. Now they will live in herds from anywhere from 5 to 20 different animals and uniquely enough that herd is uh, led by the oldest most dominant female in that group. Now of course that herd can consist of multiple females, multiple males, but that big girl is the one that's in charge. Now, moving down the body a little bit more, we're going to talk about these hooves. Now, the hooves of the antelope, of the attics here, are actually uh, quite flat and drawn out and sloped. Why? Well, commonly we talk about our snow-loving animals with their big, broad feet to help them walk on the snow. Well, kind of here is the opposite of that. It's, it's for the hot environment with that sandy bottom. Those spread out hooves help them stay up above that sand, easily navigating through it. Now, one more neat thing, if we can get our guy here to look up here, is on his face, you'll see, come right up here, buddy. You'll see what looks like a white X, which is kind of cool because, of course, the Attix has the letter X in its name. Now, these guys are just about full grown. They're only going to get a little bit bigger. They're one of the smaller antelope species here. They get about three to four feet in height at the shoulders and only reach about five feet long or four feet long in body length. Now, um, the Attix, unfortunately, is a very slow antelope species. Quite often, we think of a lot of our African hoofstock as being very, very fast runners. Attix is not, and that's what's kind of led to some of its issues that it's having in the wild. Number one, it's a very easy target for predators such as lions and African wild dogs, but also for hunters. Yes, they are hunted. Yes, they are poached, and it's unregulated over there, which really has decimated their numbers. They believe that there's only about maybe 500 some odd addicts left in the wild. However, conservation efforts are underway, and I'm always glad to talk about this, especially with guests at the park that ask about what is the purpose of keeping animals in captive management programs. Well, the Attics is a perfect example of a success story. Right here in America, there are tons of Attics in the state of Texas, for example, where they are commonly bred on these large game preserves and game farms. And what we're doing is actually rebuilding this population, creating and maintaining a, di a genetic diversity. And in the past few years here, they've actually been successful in releasing Attics antelope back into the wild. One of their cousins, the Scimitar Oryx, also similar in their situation and another success story and something we have to credit to captive management programs. So thumbs up for, for, for facilities that are working with Attics Antelope. Now talking real quick about our, uh, our babies, we always like to talk about that a little bit. Now addicts generally breed in the winter and spring months and then produce a baby after about a nine month gestation, about 250 to 270 some odd days long. And females generally give birth to one single calf. Now naturally that calf is up on its feet relatively quickly and running with the herd. 
Now, uh, last thing I guess we'll talk about is longevity. They are an antelope species that can easily live into their later teens or early 20s. Uh, so if untouched, they can live a long and prosperous life in that, well, uh, in that climate that they are well adapted for. So on that note, we're going to close out our attic segment for the day. Tune in again next Tuesday for another Animal Adventures with Jordan. And what animal will it be? We just don't know yet.